Hi everyone, Andy here at MVP Java. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be taking a look at assisted inject in Juice. So let's take a look at the outline. So what problem does it address? Well, there will be times when you want to build a object and in its constructor, you want to dependency inject your build time dependencies, right? Which are easy to do with add inject. We've seen that before in the other videos. But you also have some runtime dependency injection to put in there. So runtime parameters, right? And we know that we can't inject runtime parameters inside the constructor. And they're just not available at that time when you use add inject. So when you have that scenario of that mix, right, between build and runtime dependency injection needed in the constructor, that's when assisted inject is going to come to the rescue so it's only used in constructor injection okay in that scenario we have other options in that uh, scenario though we can create a mutable object okay so in the constructor of a mutable object you would pass in the build time dependencies via add inject and then you'd have a setter to set the runtime parameter right your runtime injection now, if you go that route and you're only calling the setter once, then it's kind of a shame because now you have to handle the threading issues that might arise, okay? So you might not want to handle that. So you say, well, I'm going to come up with, let's say, instead of builder pattern. So a builder pattern, very well-known pattern these days. Juice actually uses that internally. And you can do that but it creates the need to create a, an intermediary object right the builder pattern the builder itself actually so you might get sick of always having to write these builders all the time so you might be looking for a better way my you might want to write your own factory that's the third option i showed you how to do that in a, a previous video right providers uh, part two and and that's a good solution too and Juice can help you dependency inject that. But you have to create an intermediary factory to do that. So if these things are getting out of hand, right, creating a lot of boilerplate intermediate factories or a lot of intermediate objects via the builder pattern, or you're getting sick of, you know, handling all the threading implications um, through mutable objects, and you have the case where you have a combination of runtime and statically built dependencies like I just described, then assist here can definitely help out, okay? So I'm gonna show you a use case for it, and at the end, I'll give you my advice on um, when to justify using assisted inject, because I don't believe it is a tool in the toolbox which you should grab for every time the situation arises, okay? So here is a clearance prober. So what's a clearance prober? We're talking about air traffic control here. So that's the context. So an air traffic controller will issue a clearance, for example, send a flight to a higher flight level. And the thing when you issue a clearance is you have to issue a clearance that is valid, right? You don't want to issue a clearance uh, to an aircraft to go to a higher flight level and boom, there's a collision because there was another flight there. Okay, exactly at that, um, you know, at that flight level. So we always have to probe or check our clearances against all the other flights in our flight database and make sure there's no conflict. Okay, so that's the, that's, the, that's the whole context of the example. We have the prober that checks all that stuff and we have the clearance which is issued. So the reason why I have a clearance prober is because I never ever want to issue a clearance that has not been probed. And if I allow the programmer to instantiate a clearance and then accidentally pass it without calling the prober, well, then I have big problems, don't I? So here I create a clearance prober that ensures that every clearance I create is automatically probed without having to manually think about probing it after in, program in the programming um, that would follow. So here you'll see that I have the use case that I described. I have a statically built dependency here that's known at build time. That's the add inject is going to handle that. We should all know that by now. Here, this is what's new. This is the assisted inject, right? I'm telling Jews, help me here. Assist me in providing these runtime parameters, 
okay? Because I can't inject this into the constructor, obviously. So Juice is gonna do this for me. Juice is going to build an intermediate factory for me, okay? Which was that third option that I had just talked about and that I had made a video of. And we'll pass those in for me. And at the beginning, when the program loads, we'll obviously uh, inject the uh, built one as well. So in the background, this factory, this auto-generated factory will handle all that. You don't have to create that factory anymore. So this is an immutable object. The fields are final. I just assigned them here. And the thing to uh, know is that you never call this constructor. This is for juice. I could actually make this a private constructor and it would still work as you're going to see uh, later. Okay. So very important to know that. Now, how do I get a hold of this object? I would have to create a factory interface. Okay. And then I'll let juice know how to create my intermediate factory by pointing to this target object. And here is my factory interface. I actually put it as a nested interface within the assisted um, class itself because I want them to be together. I don't want to have to go looking for it. Okay. This is what juice is going to use to create the intermediate factory. And this is what I'm going to use in my code to dependency inject this factory and call the factory method create. In this case, you can call it whatever you want here. I'm just going to specify my runtime parameters and juice will automatically pass them to the constructor up here and get the ball rolling for me. Okay. The rest is just simple. Uh, business method calls, I probe the clearance. If everything is cool, I instantiate a clearance with the validated clearance, let's say flight level 330, so that's like three, uh, 33,000 feet, and I pass in my probe results. So that's, that's really my use case. I never want to create a clearance without a probe result, right? Because if I did, then I would have the possibility of an accident happening later on if I forget to call the prober. So this is a, a use case for using assist. It has to make sense. Okay. So in my uh, module here, my clearance module, I called it my juice module, I have to tell juice to create this intermediary factory for me. So in my install, this is from juice called factory module builder. If you look here, you'll see the import right from assisted inject. I tell it to implement this source uh, product type here. So that's what's getting returned by my interface, my factory interface. And here's the product that it's going to create. Okay, that's the class with the at assist. The clearable is just the interface that's being returned by the factory, right? If we go take a look at the prober again, notice here, that's my clearable. That's what's getting returned. I implemented the interface, okay? And here you're saying build me that factory. So you specify the factory interface uh, name itself. So I call the clearance prober factory, right? So again, here, if you go take a look at the clearance prober, that's clearance prober factory. It is a nested uh, interface. That's why we have the clearance prober dot, right? Now, this is all you need to do to tell juice to create that intermediary factory. And in fact, I wouldn't even have to put this line here if I hadn't um, you know, implemented, uh, let's say, uh, this interface here, and I had just returned here a, a, a clearance prober instead, I wouldn't have had to specify the implement. But, you know, usually um, a factory does return an, an interface type. So I put it for completeness here. Now, what is going to happen here is it's going to create that intermediate factory. So this, I actually wrote it. This is actually what you would have had to have written if you did not use juice assisted inject, right? You would have had to pass in your static dependency into the constructor. I used a provider here, okay? And then in my runtime method, my create method here, I called it, I pass in my runtime dependencies. And then I build my target, right? Providing the combination of both my statically built dependency, which I get from my provider and my runtime. So this is what juice is creating for me. Okay. I wanted to show you that, but I, this is not even going to run in my project. I could actually delete that class. Everything would just work as is. So all I'm going to do now, I have a clearance service 
that is going to dependency inject this intermediate factory that is created for me. That's the whole point of assisted inject, right? It creates this for me. And then I'm going to use my factory to create, I'm calling my factory method, passing it along my runtime parameters that I know. Juice goes in there and it builds that intermediary factory, creates my product. It gets returned to me, right? There's my interface type. And then I just say probe clearance. And if everything goes good, boom, I return my clearance. Now in my basic application here, in my main method, you can see here that I'm just creating my injector, right? So my clearance module, I'm instantiating my application and I, and then boom, I start it, right? I've explained this in, in, in videos past on how to do this. So in my start method, I get myself a random flight plan. I build myself a clearance, a random clearance, and there's my random flight plan. And if there's no problem, then um, I'm going to see my clearance issued here. So let me let me do that. So there you go. You are cleared to send clearance flight level 370, so 37,000 feet, to aircraft ID AVA 766. Now, this is actually not a valid ATC clearance, right? I'm just trying to simplify this to, to, to get an example going for assisted inject. All right, so if I run this one more time, let's see what else pops up. All right, so you're cleared to send clearance mock uh, number 080, that's for speed, to asset tap 871. So you can see here that I'm getting some random clearances generated and that intermediary factory is generated, populating them in that at assist um, constructor and off I go, all right? So that is a use case for um, assisted inject. So if we go here and we hit on the last point, advice on when to justify using assisted inject. Okay, so here's my, uh, my three points. Let's go in the order of importance, okay? I would say point number one is you really have to have a good use case for this, right? I believe this is a good use case for it, is where we ensure that this object is immutable in order to provide a clearance that is always, but always probed, okay? So I have a need for this kind of thing here. Because if you don't have a need for this, and you're just always running for that tool every time you hit this, you know, combination of runtime and uh, build time dependencies needed, which is a lot of times, right? You're gonna have a lot of code that looks like this, right? Where you're gonna have to know, or you're gonna have to train your team to know, never call this constructor, okay? This is not for you, this is for Juice. And then you're gonna either have a separate, you know, file with an interface, or you're gonna have nested interfaces, and you're just gonna have to know why this in, in nested interfaces is here. Oh, this is for Juice, but I also need to dependency inject it. So there's a more, more things that are happening in this class that don't have to do necessarily with just its business logic, but its configuration as well, okay? So the learning curve is a little bit higher here. It's more cluttered. It's also less usable. You're more tied to Google Juice here, okay? So it's, it's, it's busier here, right? There's the dependency injection is, is very much in your face here. So number one, I would say have a valid use case for it. I see a lot of real world examples as well that you see the constructor and uh, it's got like six, seven, I've even seen some eight arguments in there using assisted inject, right? Let's say three are runtime, four are static. I think that's getting out of hand. Um, I find if you have six, seven or eight construct arguments, you should start asking yourself, is my class doing too much? Is it cohesive enough? Um, should I separate into smaller classes, okay? so. That's my point number one. My point number two is really only gonna apply, let's say, to really big projects where uh, you have a lot of these intermediary factories and you're, and you're really starting to feel the pain of uh, maintaining them. So when the arguments change, then you have to go to the intermediate factories and change them as well. So you have to modify them a lot, okay? And that boilerplate code lying around can get annoying, all right? Point number three, much less important, but if you really want to keep that source together, if you want to keep the factory and the product together in the same source tree, because they're separated, let's say, in a large project, and you always have to go looking for them, 
And then if that's becoming uh, a pain as well, then you can keep them together like I did here, right? The factory, right, is together with the target. So it's much easier just to go to the source at one place and see that. So that's my one, two, three on when to use assisted. Definitely, I am not the type of developer that goes right away to Google Assisted Inject or Juice Assisted Inject when, you know, my, I'm trying to address this kind of problem, but keep it in your toolbox. Uh, it's one of the, uh, we'll say four options, right? So we got the first three here, add this one to the fourth uh, as a list and know when to use it like any good tool. So that's it for me, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'd love to hear back from you in terms of uh, how you're using uh, Assistant and Jack, what use cases you found for it. Um, because I would say that, you know, when you're looking on the web for some good examples, uh, they fall short. I don't really find a lot uh, of good examples on Assistant Inject, and I hope that this one clarified it for you. Um, waiting for your feedback, and until next time, take care, Andy signing out.